good day. That's a good week. And the reason why both of those things happen is because people got together and said, you know, we're going to do this together. We're going to build this together. Especially those who know them said, you know what, I believe in this. I'm going to come alongside and we want to bring this life-saving treatment to Pia. We know that this is a big deal. And so together, we are going to assemble ourselves, assemble our resources together. The assembly is required in order to bring about this amazing solution that now has obviously gone around the world in lifting up how it happened. Well, this morning, we're going to continue in our series called Assembly Requirements. We walk through the book of Nehemiah. And in chapter 1, we talked about in order for there to be this, this, this project, this huge wall, but not just the rebuilding of the wall, but the revival of the nation that was being destroyed, that it had been overtaken by the Babylonians, that they had to go through this process. And in chapter 1, we learned that they had to listen carefully to others' anxiety. And then beyond that, they needed to respond prayerfully to God's burden that he placed on their heart and upon Nehemiah's heart specifically. And then last week in chapter 2, we talked about how, okay, we moved even beyond that to sub submit humbly to the leader's authority in our life that we plan accordingly to the logistics needs. You know, just like he made sure that, you know, had all these letters set up so that in that 33-day journey and over 100 miles that all the governors in between would allow him to come through and that he had the, the, the timber in order to then build the gates and help rebuild the wall. But then we, learned, we ended last week with talking about how we need to share confidently in God's favor. And I don't know about y'all, did, did you have a chance this week to share how God has blessed you with somebody else? If, if you get a chance to ever come alongside of anybody, especially those that don't know Christ, much less those of us that do, when we can share confidently in knowing that God's favor is upon us, then God just takes that and blesses that. And so that's the first two chapters in the book of Nehemiah. Today we go into Nehemiah chapter 3. If you don't mind, we're going to stand in honor of the God of the universe who comes with us today that has given us his favor to even be in this place, to, to meet here at Elton. We're going to look specifically at verses 1 through 5 and then pray, but really the whole chapter is something that I think a lot of people just breeze right through. Now, this is just one of those chapters that has a bunch of names, a bunch of locations, a bunch of stuff that really is not significant. And a lot of people just, but this is powerful. This is powerful. It's God's word. It is his map for us. And let's read it now. Nehemiah chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Then Elisha, the high priest, rose up with his brothers, the priests, and they built the sheep gate. They consecrated and set its doors. They consecrated as far as the tower of the hundred and as far as the tower of Hanel. And next to him, the men of Jericho built, and next to them, Zahur, the son of Imri, built. The son of Massa built the fish gate. They laid its beams and set its doors, its bolts, and its bars. And next to them, Merimoth, the son of Ariah, the son of Hazok, repaired. And then next to them, Mushana, the son of Berachiah, the son of Meshesavel, repaired. And next to them, Zadok, and the son of Manah, repaired. And next to them, the Kohites repaired, but their nobles would not stoop to serve their Lord. That's right. That is hard enough just to say those people's names. And where they're from. It's probably what they would think if they tried to say the word Chattahoochee here in Florida. That it's outside of our context. It's outside of words that we're used to. And Lord, this morning we're asking that your spirit would take that which is your, your breath and that you would breathe life in us. That Lord, that which sometimes it just goes right over our head and we don't really get it. That Lord, today you'd make it real. That Lord, that we would surrender your spirit and be listening and say, God, change me. I give you all the glory. I need your help. You take a seat. So this morning, we move into chapter 3. And chapter 3 is about when Nehemiah and the people start to build zealously, encouraging others' significance. Okay, it's in your bulletin. If you want to look at your bulletin, there's some, there's some blanks there you can fill them out. This is where they choose to build zealously, encouraging others' significance. I mean, all throughout Nehemiah 3, you see the phrases, and next to, and after. 
I mean, they're actually said 31 times, okay? When it comes to the building process, they are side by side. They're supporting one another. It's not about being on your own. It's not about saying, I got this. I'm going to do my section. I want nothing to do with everybody else. I'm going to take my project. I'm going to make it me, myself. Ah, thank you very much. Right? I mean, that's what we do. A lot of times we get into this very selfish, very prideful mode. But this is when the people came together and they work together. And then it's interesting because the word repair is used 38 times here. This is the Hebrew word for when something is straightened. Uh, excuse me, strengthened. And even, even deeper, encouraged. I mean, think about that. This is now when the nation comes together. This is now when the people are coming here in and around Jerusalem and from the surrounding districts underneath Nehemiah's direction in the burden that God has placed on his heart. And they choose now to start building the wall. To, to build the wall and to bring revival to their nation. And so as we look at that, we see a very interesting core value that we at Anastasia Church have. That is that every person is important. We really believe this, that every person is important. And so if we really believe that, the first way in the passage that we build zealously encouraging others' significance is when, and here's your next blank, no matter who you are, build others up. Alright? No matter who you are, what God has designed us to be, how he's called us to become, is that we need to build one another up. We need to choose to say, I'm, this is not about just me, myself, and I. I'm going to love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, but I'm going to love one another as myself. And part of that is I'm going to make sure that I build others up, that I'm going to encourage, that I'm going to help strengthen, that I'm going to come alongside of them. And this morning, are you a ministry leader? Because ministry leaders, whether that's in a life group, whether that's in a, in a ministry team, whether that's in any aspect of Christ's Church, and I'm not talking about brick and mortar. But if you're a ministry leader, let me just show you, no matter who you are, how important it is, because in verse 1, church leaders led the way. Look at that. The high priest is the first to rise up with Nehemiah. And the priests then repair the sections of the wall and build the sheep gate. Now, it's very interesting because when you read throughout this entire chapter, you know who builds the most sections of the wall? The priest. It's four different sections. You tell them, when you read through this, you see that it's not just one section where a bunch of these people come together, but all throughout this chapter, you see the priests coming together and they build four sections of the wall. They have tons of responsibilities. They still have sacrifices to do. They still have that which is their everyday things that they have to do in the midst of the temple, in the midst of how God has called them to be. But you know what they choose to do? Because they see the importance and they know that the burden that God has given Nehemiah is from God. And so they come a part of this. And guess what they do? No matter who they are, priests or not. The wall. I need four sections. And church, this is not just for the priests. This is not just for the church leaders. Because look at what happens here. When the, when the high priest and when the priests come to build the sheep gate and to, and to begin to repair the wall. It's not just physically constructed, constructed, it's firstly consecrated. It is to be uniquely set apart. They make sure that if we're going to build this, we need to put the priority where it needs to be, and that is that God is the one that's going to set this apart. That He's the one that's going to make this special, and not just special, but holy. And so there is prayer that's from that's given this, this solemn prayer that they that they consecrated with. They, they make sacrifices to God, asking for his blessing, that they make sure that before anything is done, that this needs to be consecrated because then the whole wall, the whole nation, the whole region that is blessed by God. Are you consecrating your day? Do you consecrate your day? Do you set your day apart? Do you set your family apart? Do you set your life apart? Do you set your job apart? Do you set you apart for God? Because in that solemn prayer, in that sacrificial giving of that time, at the very beginning of your day, that you choose to say, you know what, God? I don't know how I'm going to get through this day, but you do because you're already there. 
You're already in tomorrow. You're already at the end of my life, and you're in all of eternity, so you know exactly what's going on. So guess what? I dedicate myself to you. In churches, we do that. We then come to this place of going, you know what? I can do things that I don't even, I don't even have the expertise to do. I don't even know what I'm doing. The Holy Spirit is going to fill me and help me to do some things. I'm like, what? I mean, are you someone who works with construction? Are you someone that's like a craftsman that you know works with your hands? Like maybe you're a carpenter, or maybe you're a builder, or maybe you know you 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 are a construction worker, and you have those. You you've been trained in that. You've been worked with that, so you know the ins and outs of that. I mean, you've got the calluses on your hand. You've got the bruises. You've got the scars to show that you know what I've done the heavy lifting, right? Well, guess what? In Nehemiah chapter 3, there's eight different occupations that are mentioned, but none are trained construction workers. None of them. In verse 8, we see wealthier occupations of goldsmiths and perfumers that were paired in the wall. You see, these careers needed steady hands and strong fingers, and any slightly wrong move could have put their livelihood in jeopardy. We're talking about artists. We're talking about people that needed specificity, that needed control. And here they are. It, it actually mentions goldsmiths three different times in this passage. I mean, this is pretty amazing because goldsmiths and perfumers are people that just pretty much related to the rich. You know, because those are the only people that can afford that kind of stuff. But here they are when it comes to building the wall, when it comes to giving themselves and sacrificing there are some of the ones that you see over and over again that go above and beyond. Are you willing to put your career on the line to be obedient to what God has called you to do? Maybe God's calling you to do some things that you don't have necessarily the experience to do. But because of the Holy Spirit and it's because of God's providence, His sovereignty, that He comes along and He helps us to then be a part of the whole in order to accomplish his best. Here's another question for you. Are you a servant leader in your sphere of influence? I mean, some of us are leaders. Some of us are people that people have to report to us because if they don't, they, they lose their job, right? They don't get a paycheck if they don't come to us, right? But are you a servant leader in your sphere of influence? Because in this passage, in Nehemiah chapter 3, there's eight different officials in charge of territories that are named all throughout this time. And you see that they're the ones that, that lead the way when it comes to the rest of those around them. And so eight different officials that come along and then help repair the wall. And, and by the way, ladies, have you ever felt insignificant when it comes to the things of God? When it, have you ever felt like you're kind of looked over when it comes to the church? Or have you ever felt like, you know, you're kind of second-class citizens when it comes to some of the things that, you know, this Christianity thing is all about? In verse 12, the daughters are mentioned. You're like going, oh, that's kind of cool. I mean, it's just once. But um, you see, in ancient times, that would have been considered heretical to record that historically. It's very interesting that in these places where the people come together and build, where the people come to repair, that whether, it doesn't matter if you're male, if you're female, it doesn't matter if you're a perfumer or you're a construction worker, it doesn't matter in all these things, no matter who you are, God calls us to build one another up. And in this chapter 3 of Nehemiah, 38 individuals are named. 38 individuals. I mean, I totally probably butchered those names as I read them in Nehemiah 3. I mean, I worked on them a little bit, but I, I probably missed it several. But the names are important because God put them in His Word. And guess what? Your name is important. You are important. And then when it comes to who God is, are you rising up and building in God's work because it is your name that might be missing? in the midst of what God is ready to do. And so it's one of the reasons why on a periodic basis, usually about three times a year, we do something called Next Step Survey. If you don't mind, they're all throughout these chairs. If you would pull that out for us, I want you to look at these, and I want you to, to take some time to fill this out. 
And I know some of you have seen this before. Some of you have never seen this at all. And you're like going, wait a minute, you know, am I, am I signing up for some kind of Ponzi scheme? You know, is uh, Mary Kay going to show up on my door? You know, no. But what I'm asking you to do is to consider that when it comes to Anastasia Church in Elton, when it comes to the church, when it comes to what God's doing and how he's wanting to build here in Elton, we really believe that every person is important. And if that's the case, then we need to come alongside of the gifts and talents that God's given you. We need to come alongside of it in equipping the church to encourage one another to do the work that God's called us to do and that He's calling you to do. And so on one side, there's just this typical, you know, here's the information, this is the way that you contact me. Please fill that out. We'd really like to follow up with you. And even if you've done this before, please fill that out because there might be some things that have changed. And we need to check that in, in, in and work our star information. And then at the bottom of that page where it says taking the next steps, it talks about the decisions that maybe in, even in today, even in this morning, that God's going to, you know, through His Holy Spirit, is going to encourage you, is going to build you up and say, you know what, it's time for me to commit my life to Christ, or to be baptized, or to become a member of a church, and maybe even here in Anastasia. And by the way, if you don't have one of these there in every other chair, grab one. If not, we actually have some extras. If you want to raise your hand, we'll make sure that you get one. There are pins. There should be several pins in and around the sleeves, the blue and red sleeves that are all around the pockets. Grab one of those. It's the way to fill it out. But I want you to know, if you don't mind, turn over and look at the site that says Next Step Survey. Because there's something on here that I, that I, I just really want to highlight. And that is this. If you look through that, it's going to talk about some pretty cool things of what God's done here in the last two and a half years. But some of you, you actually read all everything in the bulletin. That's probably not a lot of us, but there's a few of us that do. On the back side of this bulletin every week, there's a number on here that I want to share with you something about this morning. Because God's favor is upon us here at the of the Church. It says, week ending September 15th, and it talks about life group attendance, talks about worship attendance, talks about stewardship, and then it talks about together with God. And basically what together with God is our uh, financial way that we are participating in paying off and then building on the 29 plus acres that we have on 207 across the street from the corn maze. And I don't know if y'all see that on last week it says 5200 State Road 207 loan, $145,224.38. Guess what, church? It's gone. Amen. We are now debt free. Yeah. That is now zero. Because the church as a whole, as Anastasia Church, because we are together, because it understands that in order for us to be that which called, God has called us to be, has decided to say, you know what, it's time for us to start, and everything that now comes in is all positive money for us to now then build that which is God's church. By the way, we are God's church, and there is some brick and mortar that will be built in order for us to come alongside and love on other people in this community. But let me just tell you how much of a burden, or, you know, a monkey on a shoulder, and all, all those things, the weight of that is, when it is taken away, how we just need to say, praise the Lord. Yeah. 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 It's just, it is because of your generosity. It's because how you give faithfully. It is because how you've chosen to, over the last two and a half years, to show that faithfulness and in, in being, you know what, I, I might just give, you know, a little bit, or I might, you know, kind of sacrifice this big deal in my life in order to get towards that. That in that faithfulness, the church saw that and said, you know what? We're going to do this together. And they have now taken that which was reserved and not paid it off. And so church, we need to rejoice in that. We need to understand that it is because of that, it is because of that which is God's favor, that which is God, what God is building here in this community, that we have now the chance to do and continue with things like Vacation Bible School and Good News Club and our free dental bus. We're going to be doing an, a, um, an eye clinic coming up and giving away 100 pairs of prescription glasses to people that is going to be coming up in the next few months. There are ways that we're reaching into this community and not saying, you know what? Jesus is real. Jesus is Lord. And Jesus is here to come alongside of and bring that which is his blessing over our community. Do you believe that? 
Because if you believe that, we get to be a part of that. And on this, the site that says Next Step Survey, there's, there's kind of a growth chart here. There's a kind of a way for us to understand where you are in the process of Anastasia Church. And under the circle, it talks about you being a visitor, which is great if you're a visitor. We celebrate the fact that you're here. You might be going, this is a little cray-cray. I don't know. Um, this looks a little different. That's okay. Uh, we would love for you just to consider, pray about, hey, what are my next steps? You know, do I want to come back next week? If you do come back here next week, guess what? We will be here. We're going to be at Francis Field, and it's going to start at 10 a.m. And by the way, you need to bring your own chairs. Okay? Or a blanket to, you know, to sit on. You know, because um, we're going to be out on the field, and it's going to be amazing. You need to come early, and if you park in the parking garage, you don't have one of those cars that you can get downtown, guess what it's going to be? 15 bucks. Because that's what the parking garage is. If you go early and you get one of those parking cards, it's only three. If you go even early and you park in one of those neighborhoods and you walk over and you get your 10,000 steps before you can get to church, <laughs> it's free. But you know what? We then ask that you consider becoming part of our hearts here in Anastasia. And that is that you become and worship with us. The heart of God and it being a worship attender and that you want to be a part of joining this faith family. But then you know what? That we want to move beyond that too. We want to grow in the Lord. And from that worship attender, we ask that some of you start to consider being a life group inquirer. Because that's really where ministry is done. We really see what happens when people come together and they say, you know what? I'm going to love one another as yourself. I'm just going to sit around people on Sunday mornings, but I'm going to live life with some people. And learn what that's like. And the Holy Spirit's going to have to give you the strength to do that. Because I don't know. But we've got life groups, we've got small groups, we've got ministries that people can come together. And that's something if you're interested in that, check that area, you know. Check inside the club because we want you to be part of small groups and clubs here in Anastasia. Then there's a ministry partner because we ask that people come and serve where they give their time, talents, and treasures in order to give God the glory. And so those are ministry partners here at Anastasia. And maybe that's something that you're interested in. And on the other side, you can tell us what areas you might be interested in. Or maybe you're like, hey, just put me wherever. I'm open. But then finally, we have the diamond here in Ace. And that is a kingdom investor. That's somebody that says, you know what? I'm a part of here. I'm serving here. I'm in the midst of a life group. But you know what? I really believe God's calling me to be sent out. To go into the community. To go into the state of Florida. To go in the United States. To even go on the other side of the world and tell people about Jesus. That's a kingdom investor. And that's what we really believe in regards to those that are maturing in their faith. That's where he's moving us towards. And so, in all of these, maybe you have some comments, or maybe there's some prayer requests. You know what? One of the things that God's doing is He's putting together a prayer team. And that prayer team is going to be meeting on Saturdays. And if you want to be a part of that prayer team, then there's a place for you to check that on the other side. But there's also a place here that says prayer requests. If you write down prayer requests here, it's not just writing on a page. We take that seriously. And we solidly come before God, and we come before Him, and we say, you know, God, this is our offering. We're asking that you come along the side of these requests and that you move and that you're willing to And so church, that's what this is about. If we really would love for you to fill this out so we can get to know you better. Even those of you who've done it before, please do that before you leave today because it is something that is something that is a part of our, of our heart, of our club, our spade, and our diamond. It is who we are at the Church Elton. It is that which is Jesus Christ in us and we want you to be a part of it too. And so, do you choose not to build, I mean, I don't know about you, but it's one thing when you're talking about me, right? It's one thing where you say, all right, I, no matter who I am, I'll build others up. But what about this? Do you choose not to build anyone up because of who they are? I mean, do you discourage anyone because of their last name, their occupation, their political position? You know, anything else that's different from you and your identity? Is that something that maybe subconsciously or maybe even just fall out, you discourage? I don't think you, but no matter who they are, we should be building others up. And church, the second way that we build zealously encouraging other significance is when no matter where you live, build others up. Okay, church? No matter where you live, build others up. Because in Nehemiah chapter 3, there's at least seven individuals that build right outside their house. I mean, right outside where they live. And they choose to prioritize 
their home. Church, that's one of the things we need to do. We need to put first our family. I just, that's, there's truth. We need to make sure that we're loving our family. And that, that is one of the highest priorities next to loving God. But then let me show you something else, because not only does it say that about the seven individuals that live right outside their house, but in chapter 3, there's seven, seven different city districts that work together on the wall. And there's five different sections that it mentions people working, working together from totally different families and regions. I mean, they're working together on one project from two separate sections outside of Jerusalem. And they're different families, they're different places, but they say, you know what, we're going to work together to get this done. No matter where that person's from, no matter where they live, you know what, we've even had some conflicts with them. We have had war with them before, but you know what, we're coming together now to do that which God's called us to do. You know, unfortunately, when we see a major contrast in Nehemiah chapter 3, because in verse 30, it mentions this person named Mushalam. And it talks about that he lives in, the translation in Hebrew is one, that he lives in a small, one-room dwelling. Mushalam decides to build a section of the wall. And he works very hard on his section. But then we contrast that in verse 5 with the nobles of Tekoa. You know what the nobles, the leaders of this region called Tekoa, they choose not to work on the wall at all. Yet they have mansions because of their positions. Mansions choose not to work. One room goes all out. That's a contrast, church. We need, to, we need to consider that because no matter where you live, no matter what you live in, that's something that God is calling us to do. And what if you were put into a totally different environment? than what you were used to, and then placed around people you've never met before from all over the country? What if you were asked to accomplish the most challenging task you've ever attempted in your life? Would you then choose to build others up? Well, guess what? In the room here this morning, we have somebody that chose to do all those things. So I'm going to ask Seth, and, and I'm going to ask Roy to come on up. And when it comes to no matter where you live, no matter what happens in your life, I'm going to ask for them to come just share briefly about some of the things that he's been walking through now, and let's give it up for Seth, because now he's I think uh, Seth's going to have to get Miss Lisa's stick to beat off all the girls with it now. He's <laughs> good in that uniform. All right, so there's a couple questions that I have for you here that makes me prepared. I know that for me, one of the hardest things when I went through boot camp, one of the experiences was during the crucible, our drill instructors pulled us off to the side of the road. And at the time, we only got one MRE. Um, this is a long time ago. And they, uh, they threw them all in a trash bag and threw them in the dumpster. And so we went three days without any food. So that was pretty demoralizing and crushed me mentally and physically. Um, so what was one of the uh, hardest things you went through when you were
I know that now, well, I'm there because God wants me to be there. But, oh. So, I was there, so.
They didn't want to humble themselves. It's interesting because later in chapter 6, we find out that they actually pledged themselves to, to Jerusalem's opposition. And that's the reason why they're saying no. But the people of Tekoa, even though the leaders of Tekoa are saying no, the people of Tekoa aren't deterred. And you know what? They don't dwell on the fact that somebody isn't doing something because, you know what, they then feel like, you know, we're going to miss out on God's blessing. Matter of fact, not only do the people of Tekoa build one section in verse 5, but they take and go above and beyond, and the people of Tekoa repair two sections of the wall, and we see that in verse 27. I mean, think about that. Your boss, your parents, somebody that's a leader in your life chooses to say, this is not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not part of that. That we have a higher authority, and that yes, we come alongside of, but we then say, you know what, I'm going to build. I'm going to rise up and build, and I'm going to come along, and I'm going to do that which God has called me to do. And we see that here. And so what happens, though, if you've totally messed up before, and you're even publicly reprimanded for what you did? Would you rise up and build with them? I mean, no matter what you've done, would you build others up? Because in verse 11, most people would probably just overlook this name. Machaiha, son of Harim. You see, this same man is mentioned in Ezra chapter 10, verses 18 and 19 and verse 31. And he's one of the men who was confronted by Ezra for the sin of taking on a wife that believed in other gods. Publicly reprimanded, publicly brought before the nation of Israel. In other words, Malkajah got things right with God, and now, years later, he's publicly and unashamedly serving God. Church, no matter what you've done, build others up. He calls for us that no matter what sin in your life has happened, build others up. Because guess what? As we close, as we think about this, as we think about how does this impact me, yes, I need to be building others up. Yes, I need to be, no matter what they've done, I need to be building others up. But check this out. We need to make sure that not only are we believing this, but we're living this out. And there's something in this passage that just glares because as we walk through this chapter in verse 1 and verse 32, there's a similarity. And that is the sheep gate. You see, the Sheep Gate is mentioned because it's nearest to the temple in Jerusalem. It was where the sacrificial animals were brought to be offered on the altar for the sins of Israel. It was this Sheep Gate where they started to build and to rebuild and then bring revival to the nation. Think about that because in Nehemiah chapter 3, this Sheep Gate was so significant. Because not only was it the place where the sacrificial animals were, were built, were brought to be offered on the altar, but this place symbolically points us to our high priest Jesus and his work upon the cross of sacrifice for us. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 7 says this, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that is before its shears is silent, so he opened not its mouth. You see, this was a prophecy. This is part of so many prophecies of who Jesus was. You see, when Jesus was arrested and was led out to be crucified, guess where they took him through? Sheep gate. You see, the sheep gate was the place of judgment, and it tells us that he bore the judgment of our sin. It's in this gate that we must begin with God. In John chapter 5, Jesus came in through the sheep gate to the pool of Bethesda, and it was there that he healed the blind man. You see, this act was symbolic of the fact that he came as the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. You see, this poor blind man whom he healed is a picture of every one of us. Every one of us has fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us has sinned before God, and that separates us from him. And are we willing, just like that blind man did, are we willing just like Jesus did to walk through the sheep gate of sacrifice. Are we willing to come to the cross of Christ and find forgiveness? No matter what we've done. Church, you see, the wall started at the sheep gate and it finished at the sheep gate. And in every part of our life as a Christian, it needs to be done in light of the cross of Christ. 
What about you? And what about you? No matter who you are, where you live, what you've done, Jesus chose to build you up. Because of his life, because of his death, because of his resurrection, we now have the gift of the Holy Spirit that can then help us to build others up, even though I can't do that in my ministry. Church, this morning as we get a chance to not just look at what people did hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, but we get to walk in through that same sheep game today. Lord Jesus, we love you. It's because of your cross. It's because of your sacrifice. You were the Lamb of God that gave your life so that we might have eternal life. And this morning, no matter who we are, no matter where we live, no matter what we've done, Lord Jesus, you've come to give us life and life to the full. So, Lord, whatever you're doing in our lives, Lord, however way you're moving in our lives, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would encourage us, strengthen us, repair us. Because we can't do it on our own. We fall short. Lord God, we love you and we need you. And this morning, we ask that we would take those next steps. We do it for your name.